Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you how to very easily create your own Counter-Strike 2 skin. So let's get right into it. The first thing we need to talk about are the different skin types. So when it comes down to it, there are really just three skin types and a lot between them. So first off, we have the texture-based skins like this pipe down. As you can see, these pipes on the left side are actually coming out of the weapon and we have some kind of texture here. Texture-based skins are probably the hardest to make. Next up, we have pattern-based skins. These are by far the easiest to create. And basically, you create an image and by random distribution and percentage, we are going to have a lot of random outcomes and you can keep randomizing until you have your perfect weapon and can use that as a thumbnail for the workshop. So probably the easiest one to create, but not a lot of freedom. And then we have the painted skins like this USP, the traitor. There, as you can see, there's no texture coming out of it. We do not have it randomized like the pattern one. This is an actual painting that someone did themselves. And this is also what we want to look at today. It's the medium difficulty, but I believe it's still very easy, fairly doable for everyone and just uh, very intuitive. All right, before you can get started in your skin adventure, you're going to need three things. I will have all these three things linked down in the video description. Please make sure to download them from the video description because the second one, if you're going to look for it, uh, it is called VTF Edit. Uh, if you look for it, there are a lot of scam links actually, same for the CS2 maps workshop. And basically this is going to be to make the skin, to color the skin, also to texture it if you want to do it. Pattern creation I usually do somewhere else. Second up VTF edit. Uh, this is if you finish in Blender, uh, over here where we make the skin, you need to convert the skin for CS2 to read it and to use the data that you give them and for that you're going to use VTF edit and this third link uh, you see here new CS2 weapon model uh, as you can already imagine basically this is what we are going to need uh, to not make the weapon ourselves because Blender uh, as you might know is a program where you can create your 3D things like weapons for a game and we don't want to create the weapon from scratch obviously also, uh, if we mess things up there and not make it one-to-one, -one, which is basically impossible from scrap, uh, yeah, then it's not going to be readable by the game. So, uh, basically, resources, uh, our tool to use, and our translation converter. Download all of these three things and then boot up Blender. This is where we'll meet up with you again. Once you've booted up Blender, there are two things you want to get rid of. First off, get done off the scene, get all this object out there. You can just pull them like this and press delete or go over here under collection. And then also, if you want this in your native language, maybe this is English for you too by default. If you want this in your native uh, language, you can do edit uh, preferences and up here in the first interface down here, you have language uh, to put this on anything you want and you are good to go. All right, so you've downloaded the, our resources, the CS2 resources. Now you want to go to file and import. And now you have two different wave fronts. This experimental one, we want to go with the normal one down here, second down from last wavefront.obj. And now this is gonna open up. I'm gonna go to downloads and I've already unpacked the resources like this. And now you can basically pick the weapon that you want to do. For our example today, we are going to go with the M4A1 with the silencer on. Now just go import OBJ. You can ignore the settings for now and get this in here. And as you can see, this is where you are going to have your M4 silence. By the way, if you want to navigate like this, you just need to hold down by default uh, your middle mouse button and then you can rotate it around just like this. Because as you can see, and see left click and right click already is used for other things so very good to know if you want to move it around like this all you need to do is go over here to this little hand emoji move the view and now you can use this to go around obviously you can also zoom and this is basically how you are going to navigate through this all right so the next thing we need to do is go over here to the top left you have this little button up there right under file here this thing and over here under general, the my second image editor, you want to hit this. And now it's very important that we press new one. You can title it however you want. Just, uh, I prefer easy type out names because we're going to need it again. So I'm just gonna go YouTube test or something like that. 
uh, as a name. And now these are actually pretty important, the width and the height. Uh, you can't just do whatever you want here. It's really important that you go for 238, just like this for both. So you have a nice little square. Then uh, color, base, you could already change if you want some base color, uh, but I prefer having it black. And yeah, I just have my own workflow. Uh, I recommend you start out with without changing this, anything else here. And just if you're getting used to it and learn the function, you can go wild here. All right, so this is our now way bigger double and size square. And now we go back to the 3D viewport. From here on, we are going to need to create a material. So how are you going to do this? You need to select the gun itself. And now we have more options down here. You want to go to the second bar. So this is for me, the material the properties. And for me, I already have one here. Uh, if you do not have something here, I'm going to get rid of it. You're going to create a new one. You make sure this is blue and then you are going to be just fine. All right. So we have done this. We've created uh, our material. We have created an image. What we can do now is we go back here to the shader editor this time. And now we want to make sure we have our material selected. It is called default OBJ over here, default OBJ, because we did not change anything. You can rename this uh, to easier find it again. If you have worked with multiple skins, if you have multiple skins opened up, maybe you can name them for easier time uh, navigating through here. Next up, you're going to click on add or the shortcut shift A, whatever you prefer. You're going to go for search. And now in here, you're going to search for the image texture, just like this. Place this down wherever, it doesn't matter too much. And now you want to connect the color of our image texture. If you remember, we just created that to uh, this material over here. Just drag this yellow color to this yellow base color. And as you can imagine, now the texture is linked to the material. We need to do one more thing. We need to actually select it. I'll press on this little image button here to select our image. And we are going to have YouTube test here. That's how I named the image. And this way now it is actually linked the right thing. And let's go back. We're gonna go over to the 3D viewport, just like this. And now we're gonna swap over to texture paint. And as you can see, scrolling out of here, this is now what uh, you saw in the beginning uh, where I was painting around. You can now pick a color down here. You can get, take your time to get familiar with all the options. I like to just start right into it. Uh, just make a skin, select the color. I want to go for something purple goldish team today. And as you can see, I'm just gonna uh, take a stroke like this. And you can see the handle is gonna turn purple. And not only the handle, we've linked our picture and our material with each other. And that has not only the function that we can actually use it for Cisco, it's also the function if we go in here and turn the Mac purple in here, you're going to see it's also turning the Mac purple over here. So uh, that way you can go for really big precision if you go into this engineering uh, like uh, painting here on the left side and you can just say, okay, I just want everything off the back side of the magazine to be purple. You can go off like this. You can make it smaller up here to be more precise. We're gonna go for something like free and now we can make actually just the borders and that way you can texture the skin, uh, not texture, paint on the skin. So I don't want to waste your time by you looking at me making a skin. You want to make your own skin. I respect that. So we're just going to skip through this by making everything in our purple phone. Uh, by the way, I can really, oops, that was the wrong tool. Um, a tool that I can really recommend using is the smear tool, especially if you use two different colors, you can have really amazing outcomes. Like you see by accident, I used it before. We have uh, this color jump in here uh, by pure randomness, actually. You can have very nice results if you take your time with the smear tool and two different colors. If you need uh, advice on colors, I recommend Color Adobe. It's a free web page, uh, just a personal recommendation, not sponsored or anything. Just a really nice page uh, to find ideas for color compensations. All right. Now, you want to go, let's say we finished our skin. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna to make too much time in the video into this. I may already take too much time out of the video. You want to go to image. You want to go save as, go somewhere where you find it again. I will just go downloads and save as image. Remember the title, it's very important. Uh, 
YouTube test is going to be the one for me, very easy to write, and it's gonna save as point PNG. That's actually pretty important. All right, now that this is saved, we want to switch programs. We are done in Blender for now. You can also save your project if you want, if you want to continue working on this later on. Please also make sure to save the image. That's really important. And now switch over to VTF Edit. Once you've arrived in VTF Edit, you simply want to click on to import. And now we uh, just need to go into our downloads and open up this or not downloads wherever you saved it. In my case, it's going to be the downloads. And now you just leave all the settings on the fault. If they are changed for some reason, just copy my settings that you see right now. Go on OK, wait for it to load a little bit and you're going to have the picture in here in just a second. All right, there it arrived. Obviously, we're not going to see much as we just colored it basically in one color and had this one random smear on it. And now all that you need to do actually is you want to export this file uh, as a TGA file. That's pretty important. Now again, we want a simple name and the next part, the simple name is going to be important. So we're going to go YouTube test once again, but not PNG this time is going to be a TGA. We're going to save it and then we are basically done with VTF edit. Next up, you need to boot up Counter-Strike if you have not enabled your workshop tools yet. Enabling them is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is go into your game settings over here and then down here at install Counter-Strike workshop tools, you just want to select yes and then already in the background the Steam download is going to start. Then you can close down Counter-Strike once again. After the download has concluded of your workshop tools, you simply want to boot up Counter-Strike once again. And now you're going to be asked, do you want to play Counter-Strike 2 or the workshop tools? You're going to select the workshop tools and press play, obviously. And in just a second, this is going to load up. And now you want to click launch workshop item tools. Once you've booted up your CS2 workshop item editor, all you need to do is go here under Gunsmith into your GS Paint Kit example. So if you're in here, there are two things that you need to do. First off, you need to choose the weapon you want the skin to be applied on. Obviously, it's going to be the M4 Silence because we painted on an M4 Silence. On any other skin, this is going to lo be looking very scuffed. And now, the other thing is going to be the albedo texture over here. So, if this is your first time in here, you haven't done it uh, uh, any skin so far, you can press this button to open up the designation folder for a faster way to find it. We are going to go by hand there. Uh, you can also do it this way. All you need to do is go to your Counter-Strike 2 properties on Steam and install that files, go to browse. And in here, you want to go into content. You want to go into CSGO, materials. And in here, you are going to make a new folder called custom, like I did here. Now in here, you want to put your TGA file that VTF edit just created. In my case, it's going to be YouTube test. And I like to rename it and copy and paste the name because now you need to manually put material backslash custom backslash and now the name dot point, what do you want to call it, DGA. And as simply as that, you are going to have your skin that you just created linked in here to the CS2 workshop item editor. I keep clicking away for some reason. And now you still have some more options to play around with, but that is too deep for this kind of video. Just one thing I want to show you, the pearl essence scale. Remember how we just made it purple. This is for a shine effect. We're going to go complete overkill for this, like 4.0 complete overkill. We can simply pull a screenshot. We can inspect the weapon. We can preview. What is the preview? What is the inspect? Inspect is in game in the inventory. If you would inspect the skin out of the game, maybe in the main menu and preview will boot up the game on like a mini dust two or whatever you want. And in there you can actually run around and shoot your custom made gun. We are going to do inspect for right now. And the fourth button, the publish one, allows you to immediately publish your own skin to the workshop as simply as that. There are no more steps required. Uh, maybe you want to inspect or preview before to make a screenshot to attach to it. As you can see, this is our inspect. This is yellow golden shinish thing here uh, is obviously what well, the pearl essence scale that we just uh, put to completely overkill. You want to go to really minimum uh, values there or maybe you make some really nice new Tokyo stuff. So that's how our weapon is going to look. And yeah, it's really that simple. There's not much more to it. 
we want to pull a screenshot maybe like this and if we now go on to the publish tab instead uh, and press new as you can see our latest screenshot is going to be saved you can also browse for one of your choice uh, this is the weapon and we can now go for a title youtube test in this case we go for a description uh, please like and subscribe my video if i helped you out i would really appreciate it and now you're gonna put the visibility to public weapon text you change to whatever weapon this is obviously this is a ump no questions asked and if we would click submit now which i'm not going to do because i still have some kind of honor not in real life but in my digital life and my steam profile so i do not want to ruin it by this if you click submit right now it is going to be submitted to the workshop a wealth deployee still needs to review the skin if it's allowed to be posted on there and as soon as that happened everyone is going to be able to see and to vote for your skin and that's also how you get your chance on being accepted and to making big money with the skin game so that was this video for today i hope you liked and i hope to see you again in another one until then goodbye